Hey everyone, welcome back to another Tic Tac Taiko episode. Today I will be breaking down Dorotsuku. Dorotsuku is one of the most common Taiko rudiments out there. You'll find it in songs, you'll find it in drills, you'll find it in solos. Anywhere you find Taiko, you will find Dorotsuku. This video will have three main parts. Part one, I will be looking at what makes a good Dorotsuku from a bad Dorotsuku. Part two, I will talk about how a lot of people play Dorotsuku versus how I play Dorotsuku. And part three will be a short demonstration. So with that, let's get going. Now, for those who saw my triplet video where I broke down that rudiment, this first part is going to sound pretty similar. With Dorotsuku, you've got two loud notes and you've got two quiet notes. Pretty simple. To make a good dorotsuku, you want to make sure that the two don are the same volume and the two tsu are the same volume. Pretty simple. Once you start to change those dynamics, you no longer have dorotsuku. Maybe that second don is a little quiet or that first tsu is a little loud. Whatever it is, make sure those two notes are the same in relation to each other. That's the most important thing. The second part of a good dorotsuku is relative volume, making sure that the loud notes are much louder than the quiet notes. That doesn't mean that this is bad or that this is bad. This is very situational. You may have a composition that goes, right? You're told to play like that, so it's not bad. Or maybe you're soloing and you really want to bring up the tsuku so they're not quite tsuku anymore. Not bad, you chose to play that way. But ideally, you want to make sure that you can hit a nice difference between the louds and the softs. Okay, so those are the qualities that make up a good dorosuku. So how do we or how do you make sure you're playing a good dorosuku? You can't do it when you're in practice with your group because the ensemble sound masks the things that you often will need to work on. You have to practice at home, or at least without other people around, whether it's a drum pad or a drum in the corner of your studio, whatever. Get yourself some quiet time and listen. Or play in front of a mirror, or record yourself and watch the playback. That's the only way to truly know if you're doing the things that you agree a dorosuku should be and sound like. Welcome to part two, where we break down the actual playing of Dorotsuku. Now, there's lots of different styles of taiko all over the world, right? But in my opinion, there's just two ways to play Dorotsuku. The easy way and the hard way. So, the next section is going to have a split screen where one side is the hard way and one side is the easy way. You'll see it from the front, you'll see it from the side, you'll see it at a slow tempo and at a fast tempo. And what I'd like you to do is to watch and listen, see if you notice what the differences are, and then we'll talk about them afterwards. So here we go.
Were you able to catch the differences between the two? If not, that's okay. Or, or maybe you saw something was different, but you weren't able to fully articulate it. The cool thing about this video is that after I explain the differences and break them down, you can always go back to that section, watch the side-by-side -side video, and you'll really be able to see the difference between the two. So not only have I closed the blinds so it's not as bright in here, I've also come to the side because it's going to be an easier view for you when I'm breaking down the technique. Let's start with the so-called hard way of playing Dorotsuku. So, I'm playing four notes, but each hand has a hidden extra motion. With that in mind, let's see if you can spot it. I'll do the same thing. Did you catch it? I have to lift the hand before I strike the next doll. So that's six motions for four notes. Or if I isolate just the right hand, one, two, and, one, two, three, one, two, and, one, two, three. If I want to make that technique more efficient, what do I get rid of? First hit, well, I can't get rid of the dong. The third step, well, I can't not get ready for the next dong. The let's see, the second, well, I need a quiet note. So, what do I get rid of? Nothing. You don't get rid of anything. It's a trick question. You combine the second and third step so that you are hitting as you are lifting. And that, that is the key to make hard into easy. I'll break that down because just saying it doesn't make it happen. So let's isolate the right hand again. I'm going to change my grip so it's really far out there. I'm going to come up a bit so I don't hit the drum by accident. Imagine that there is a force, like a bachi, on the bottom of your hand, not the wrist, the bottom of your hand. So around here, not here. And that's going to push up really, really fast. Okay. Now when it pushes my hand up, watch what happens to the tip of my bachi. doesn't always go as much, but you can see every time I push really fast and hard here, the tip of my bachi goes down as my hand comes up. So what's happening, if I make my grip normal again, is that by coming up hard and fast here, or maybe even thinking of pulling here, I'm creating somewhat of a fulcrum around my index finger. So while I'm pushing up it's also pushing down, and then the bachi raises up for the next strike. So it's coming down, and then it's striking as it's coming up. That's, that's the magic, that's the trick right there, if you will. Granted, it's not a very loud strike. So on its own, it may not be enough, but it's important not to try to get more sound out of it by pushing down, by hitting down. It's gonna to torque your arm and, and your alignment. Don't worry about the volume. This is not about volume. This is about technique. Also notice that I'm not coming, <laughs> I'm not coming down here and then trying to hit. I'm staying well above the surface because I might want to play something nice and quiet here. And if I'm here, I've lost that ability. So hit hard, but stay above, and then you can do this nicely and easily. That's, that's the technique. Now, 
there are two additional things that I do that I'm not going to spend too much time talking about because that's not the point of this video, but I do want to show you so that you don't feel frustrated. Well, how come he can play that loudly and I can't? Okay. One thing is, there's a little bit of forward motion sometimes when I lift up. Can you hear this? It's not very loud, but this extra motion added to this extra motion brings up the volume. So if I come forward, all right, I've got a little bit more volume. And the other thing, which is sort of the big thing, is quick twitch muscles. I have to say that slowly because otherwise my lips will jumble that. Quick twitch, okay? Getting quick, quick. Essentially pulsing from the bicep down through the arm. A lot of uh, breakdancing, popping and locking, they master this motion. Being able to play from here and have decent volume. So a combination of lifting, a combination of pushing, and a combination of twitch gives me the ability to play that suit as loud or as quietly as I want. So it almost matches the volume of the dong when you practice it and master that technique enough. But for now, the ability of lifting quickly is where we start. Then you can add the left hand, then you can practice with both hands. Take it slow. Speed is not your friend here. And here we are, part three, the demo part. Uh, this is not going to take very long. I'm just going to play dorotsuku, starting slow and going fast. I know that when I get faster and faster, the quiet notes are going to creep up and get louder and louder. That's something for me to work on. That's okay. But as I play, I want you to notice the technique. See if I'm doing the things I say I'm doing. Um, this is a bit of put my money where my mouth is, if you will. So, dorotsuku. And just in case there's anyone out there who's saying, oh, it's easy because I'm playing with tapered bachi. Nope. Same. We're almost at the end of the video, and you know what just occurred to me? I have not done a good job as a salesperson. I broke the technique down, but I haven't really tried to convince anyone that the easy way is better than the hard way. So let me say three things. The first is that you've gone from four notes done in six motions down to four motions. That's a 33% increase in effectiveness, more or less. Imagine having a 33% increase in effectiveness when it comes to push-ups or running. You can now run 33% further or run 33% faster. Wouldn't you want to try that technique out and see what happens? I would. Another reason is that it does not only apply to dorotsuku. This is dorotsuku. 
Donsuku, triplet, in any pattern where there's a difference in dynamic, which is pretty much in every single song out there. And a third reason, when I was playing the hard version, then I played the easy version, to me it felt, and this is subjective, but it felt like the hard version was twice as hard. It had so much more tension and effort, and the easy version was like breathing. It was so much easier to do. If those three things don't make you at least curious, then I can't offer anything else. But I'm hoping that some, if not most of you watching, at least want to try and see what happens when your technique changes towards the easy side of Dorotsuku. And there we have our Dorotsuku. Broken down, stripped bare, secrets revealed. We looked at a good one versus a bad one. We talked about different ways to play it, hard versus easy. And for that technique in particular, if you are practicing it, take your time. Have patience with yourself, be kind to yourself, practice it with intention, and it will start to happen. You have to fight muscle memory to make it happen, but it will. And it will prove to be one of the most valuable techniques that you can learn, I promise you. And with that, I'm gonna say the usual. If you like this video, let me know with a thumbs up. If you have comments on something I said or there's another fundamental or rudiment you want me to break down next, let me know in the comments below. And of course, you awesome people are already subscribing, but there's lots of room for more awesome subscribers, so give that button a push. Until then, keep practicing, take care.